All right, let's get this. Uh, let's get this Corona vacation video. Hey, Andrew, you ready? Andrew. Okay, Andrew's not here. All right, Isaac, you ready to get this started? Isaac. Is there? <sighs> Guess I got to do this myself today. What's up, guys? I'm here with my best friend Andrew. Okay. I'm here by myself today. Actually, it's really good. I'm glad um, Andrew Brooks right now, our valiant leader, is at vacation. He's at the beach. He's enjoying time with his family. Um, he's probably kicking it right now, you know, sipping a soda on the beach and it's warm. And I am a little bit jealous, but I'm super glad he got to go do that. Isaac Tate, my fill-in, you've probably seen him many, many times in videos. He's actually um, finishing up his internship, he worked here over the summer, um, and so school starting back, and he's actually 16, so he's in school, so he's got to go back to school, so this is his last day, so we're letting him do what he needs to do before he finishes up, but I'm here today, I'm super excited, it's Sunday, we have an awesome lesson coming up, I'm actually teaching it, so you might get tired of me at some point, but who cares, I'm super excited, on top of that, it's a special day, it's not just Sunday. It's actually National Coloring Day. You heard that right, ladies and gents. All of you wonderful people who love to color, stay inside the lines, which I can, and do a lot of fun things like that. Well, today's the day to celebrate. So I thought, what better day than to do a challenge involving coloring? So today we're actually talking about the creation. Right? The creation of the whole world and everything. And so I thought, why not just have a little bit of a challenge? So we're going to set the timer to one minute. And when that timer goes off, you're going to have to see how many animals you can draw in that one minute time period. Makes sense? So we're going to have a timer. It's going to go for a minute. And when that runs up, we're going to see how many different animals, fish, birds, Whatever, just like God's creation, how many different of those you can draw, all right? Are we ready? Are we set? Go, okay. Um, oh, I don't even know what to draw, all right. Um, round, round body for sure. Um, I'll get a tail, okay. I don't know how to draw a duck, guys. Ooh, this is not a this is not a good looking duck, guys. I can't mm -hmm. eat tail feathers. All right. Um. And what other animal are there? Um, an elephant. An elephant. I hope some of you guys can draw better than I can. Ooh, this is a wonky looking elephant. You've got some big old ears. Um. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Oh god. The, uh, the tail, uh, what else? Oh, I can do a fish. I can do a fish real good. Fish. Blub blub. Um, ooh, some birds. Oh, I already did a duck. Uh, ooh, let's do a snake. A snake's real easy, right? Just some squiggly lines. Uh, face, eyes, and time! <sighs> Kinda hope you guys did better than, um, than I did. I have a... Well, I guess I'll show you guys. This is what I managed. Three-headed um, cat, green duck, that looks, that's okay, an elephant, a fish, a snake. I got five total animals in there before my time ran up. I hope that you guys did a little bit better. Um, I hope you guys had fun drawing too. I really enjoy drawing, I just, you know, I'm not good. Um, but I can be creative in other ways. Um, and like I said, we're talking about creation today. So we're going to talk about God's creativity. How awesome he is, how smart he is, and what he did to create the entire world. Which is pretty crazy. Um, before that, we've got an awesome game. The, uh, the screen will show you the instructions. Um, it's super fun. Um, we also have Marissa who's going to teach us um, and go over our memory verse 1 or, uh, for, the, for the beginning of the month, right? It's August 2nd, so it's the beginning of the month, and I'm super excited. So we're going to go over that. Um, uh, so right now, I'm going to head on over to the game, and I will see you guys during the message. Bye.
great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalms 145.3 Hey guys, we are at the beach. We've been having vacation this week. So we're going to do Super Wonderful this morning. And you know what? It got me thinking that this whole time that we're on vacation we uh we've seen a lot of really cool things that god has made he's so he's so strong he's made mountains we've seen the mountains we've seen the beach and the fact that he was able to make all of that stuff is just awesome and he made it that we can enjoy it so we hope that you will worship with us this sunday morning and we will see you later sing with us My God is strong He'll do anything big or small Nothing is impossible For a super wonderful God Every day I can know God is always there For me and my family Every day I can know Greater is the one who lives inside me Super big, super strong, super wonderful God. Super big, super strong, super wonderful God. Oh, 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 oh. Our God is strong. For a super wonderful God Every day I can know God is always there For me and my family Every day I can know Greater is the one who lives inside me Super big, super strong, super everybody my name is Jacob and today I want to talk to you about creativity because there's so many different ways to be creative right you could be like a creative actor alas poor Yorick I knew him well who's Yorick you got the wrong skull kid oh you could be a creative dresser Hey! You could be like a creative, I don't know, scientist? <laughs> but most of the time when you hear the word creativity, you think of something like this. A work of art. 
Or maybe you think of something like this. Wonder what's got him so anxious. Oh! Oh! Ugh, ewy. In today's story, you're going to hear about the very best creation of all time. Actually, it's the very first creation of all time. It's where creativity was born. And cockroaches. Uh. No, it's good. It's, uh, it's indescribable. See you in a few. What's up guys? So like I said earlier, we are going to be in like the very first page and like the very first words of the Bible. Yep, that is right. We're in Genesis 1. We're talking about creation today and we're going to do some some live action kind of play out of what this looked like because as well it's a really really cool and interesting story so it opens up and it basically says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth now before we think like this it didn't really look like this so it's just kind of nothing actually it says the earth didn't have any shape and it was empty and there was darkness over the surface of the waves and at that time the spirit of god was hovering over the waters so we start with a totally blank slate. Just think blank canvas, like the back of a piece of paper. It's, there's nothing. It's void, as the Bible says. And then, just like that, God says, let there be light. And that's verse 3. And he says, God saw that the light was good. He separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and he called the darkness night and there was evening, and there was morning in the first day. So, here we do. It's first day. The earth is void, and God says, let there be light. And then there's light. And then he says, all right, we're going to have day and night. And then God creates, well, the first day and night. And just like that, time, our world, and everything started. Now, that's not all after that god says just a little bit further down let there be a huge space between the water and let's separate water from water and that's exactly what happened god made the huge space between the waters and he separated the waters under the space from the waters above it god called the huge space sky there was evening and there was morning on day two so not only does God say, let there be light, and then create light. He says, all right, now let's make the world, and let's make it into something. And so he separates the water from the ground, right, from the water in the sky. Now, it's not actual water, but the sky is blue. And so when they were writing this, that's kind of what they wrote. The sky and the water are separated from each other. And that's why we have a sky now, and that's why we have the ground. And then he says... God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into one place and let dry ground appear. And that's exactly what happened. God called the dry ground land and he called the water was gathered together, the seas. And God saw that it was good. So, boom, God gathers all the water together and all of a sudden dry land and oceans upside down. But oceans nonetheless begin to form just because God said so. So not only does he go, boom, and there's light, and then he goes, boom, and then there's sky and ground, and then he goes, boom, and then there's land and ocean. Like, he's just saying these things, and he is creating. Um, and then God said, let the land produce plants, let them produce their own seed, and let there be trees on the land that grow with fruit with a seed in it. Let's eat kind of plant or tree have its own kind of seed and that's exactly what happened so the land produced plants each kind of plant had its own kind of seed and the land produced trees that grew fruit with seeds and each kind of tree had its own good seed and god saw that it was good so then he just creates plants right now you have to remember all of this is happening and no person was alive. No one had ever seen a tree. 
No one had ever seen the ocean. No one had ever seen the sea. And God was just creating these things out of thin air. He's got plants and he's got dirt and he's got trees and seeds and he's just creating it. He's not, he doesn't have a picture. He doesn't have an instruction manual in front of him. No, he's just creating it out of thin air. How crazy is that? And then God said in verse 14, Let there be light in the huge space of the sky. Let them separate the day from the night. And let the light set the times for the holy celebrations and the days and the years. Um, let them be lights in the huge space of sky and give them light on earth. And that's exactly what happened. God made two great lights. He made the larger light, the sun, right, to rule over the day. And then he made the smaller night, the moon, and it ruled over the night. He also made the stars, and God put lights in the huge space of sky to give light on the earth. And he put them there to rule over the day and night. And he put them there to separate night light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning. And it was day four. So, first of all, God created light before he even created the sun and the moon, right? So God doesn't even need the sun and the moon. He can just create it. But he decides, you know what? I'm going to give them a source of this light. I'm going to give them the moon and the stars and the sun. And the sun will help them know what time it is. And it will help them know what time of year it is. The moon will help them see at night. And the sun will grow their plants, right? God created this amazing, I mean, it's a ball of fire in space for us. And he had never seen anything like it. He just created it. And then God said, Let the sea be filled with living things. Let birds fly above the earth and across the huge space of the sky. So God created the great sea creatures, right? Schools of fish. Sharks, whales, amazing creatures like that. Colorful corals and fish, you know. And he created every single one of those. He created every kind of living thing that fills the sea and moves about in them. He created every kind of bird that flies too, right? He created these ostriches, right? And then he also created these beautiful, colorful birds. Have you ever seen parrots or anything like that? They're amazing. Or owls, right? He created each an individual animal, every bird and every fish. And God blessed them and he said, Have little ones so that there will be many of you. Fill the waters and the sea, that there be more and more birds on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning. And it was day five. So day five, God starts creating animals. So it's creating fish and birds, things in the sky and things in the sea. And if you didn't know this, there's millions and millions of types of animals. In fact, we probably don't even know all the animals. Like scientists, really smart people, haven't even found all the animals in the sea. We keep finding new ones. And there's still new birds out there, new species that we discover, right? And God made all of these. And then it says right here in verse 24, God said, let the land produce every kind of living creature, right? That there be livestock and creatures that move along the ground, right? Maybe like a giant rhino or like a slithering lizard or even like a spotted cheetah. And God made every kind of wild animal. He made every kind of livestock. He made every kind of creature that moves along the ground. And God saw that it was good. And then God said, let us make human beings so that they are like us. Let them rule over the fish in the seas and the bird in the sky. Let them rule over the livestock and all the wild animals. And let them rule over all the creatures that moved along the ground. So he created animals and then... He created us. He created me. He created you. He created your mom and your dad. He created your siblings, your best friends, whoever is around you, the first people in you today. God created you. And then God created human beings in his own likeness. 
He created them to be like himself, and he created them male and female. God blessed them, and he said to them, Have children so that there will be many of you. Fill the earth and bring it under your control. Roll over the fish and the sea and the birds in the sky. Roll over every living creature that moves along the ground. Right? And then we're going to skip down all the way to chapter 2, verse 2. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on that day, he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. He blessed it because on that day, he rested from all the work he had done. So this is a crazy story, guys. I mean, think about it. God didn't have an instruction book. He didn't have a guide. It wasn't like someone was telling him what to do. Or he saw a picture on the internet or a cool video. No, he made it all up himself. You see, this creation story not only shows how powerful and how awesome our God is, but also how creative, how deep he thinks, how much he cares about us to give us plants and animals and fish and birds and the sea and the land and the sun and the sky even. You see, we serve an awesome creative God. And he wants you to be like that too. We read, we're created in his image, we're like God in what we can do and how we think. And so let's not forget that. That God is super creative and he really, really loves us. Let me skip on down and see what our question of the week is. Here's what we have to understand, guys. There is no limit to God's creativity, right? There is none. So this week, just think, what's the craziest thing you can think of? What's the craziest idea you can come up with? And then remember that God doesn't even have a limit. There's nothing he can't think of, and there's nothing he can't do. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. I'm going to pray, and then we'll go on to the next thing. God, thank you that you are creative, that you are awesome, that you are smart, and that you created me and all the people around me, everyone watching this, and their families. Lord, help us to remember how awesome and creative you are. I pray this in your name. Amen. Bye, guys. Okay, I just thought of another way to describe creativity. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. I mean, God created everything, right? He made the stars and the planets and the mountains and the oceans. He made dogs and cats and elephants and ostriches. But when he made us, it got personal. God made us so that we think and feel and act a tiny bit like him. We are made in his image. So check it. Imagine looking at yourself in a mirror. That's what God is like. And no, I'm not saying that he has the same hairstyle or eye color, but look a little bit closer. There's imagination behind your eyes. You have a smile that could encourage someone when they're feeling down. And your hands that could help someone lift a heavy load. Ugh. All right. Whew. There's no limit to what God can do through you. That's because there's no limit to God's creativity. That's the one thing to remember today. There's no limit to God's creativity. Seriously, take a look this week at the things God has made and let it blow your mind. Look at the stars in the sky and think about how it could take literally millions of years just to visit one up close. Listen to the sounds outside your window at night and let yourself wonder how do crickets make that noise anyway? And then look really close in the mirror and see how unique you are. See the color and feel the texture of your skin. Look deep in the reflection of your eyes to see a God that made you and loves you more than you could even imagine. That should give us all a lot to think about. No wonder this guy's a statue. He's thinking about God's creativity. Dude.